Hello and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today I'm reviewing Colouring Heaven issue number 33. This is the latest one. It's The Secret World of Animals and it features 40 illustrations by the wonderful illustrator Kanoko Egusa. Hopefully I'm saying that right. And she is the illustrator of the beautiful books uh, Rhapsody in the Forest and Menwe de Bonheur. Probably not pronouncing that right either. Um, but yes, there are always 40 designs every single month. They're always by a different illustrator or group of illustrators. And this, this month it's Kanoko's turn. So as I said, 40 designs in total, including 10 exclusive new designs. So 30 of these will feature in both of her colouring books and 10 of them have been illustrated just for Colouring Heaven. So as usual, if you've had these books before, you'll know that we have a beautiful gold foiling to the title. The front and the back covers are all matte and they're perfect for colouring. So if you like to colour your covers, you can do that really, really well with either pencils or markers on this. Colouring Heaven's Facebook page often have competitions for colouring the covers as well. So it's worth checking that out. Now, as we go through, you'll see that we have this inner cover which gives us a little bit of information about Kanoko. Uh, we have the little thumbnail of the cover here as well, and then all of the copyright sort of information and where you can find Colouring Heaven on Facebook. Now here we've got a colour combination chart. This is super, super handy uh, for combining your colours, for putting down colour palettes and naming them so you can see what colours you've used. Now let's get straight into the illustrations. So if you've not seen Kanoko's work before, it's very much sweet, nature, wildlife, animals based work. Um, it's very Sylvanian families, little mice wearing clothes, doing the shopping, doing the farming. Um, it's all sort of animals in their natural habitat, but with a whimsical twist. So as usual, all of the pages are single sided. The paper's fairly thick, it's not the thickest I've come across, but it's definitely by no means thin. It's pretty much perfect. It has a great tooth for your pencils, but it's not too rough. Some of these illustrations are landscape orientated and some of them are portrait like this one. I absolutely adore this. I love anything that's within a frame or a sphere. And this is just a stunning little Christmas themed uh, illustration. So I might as well turn this around so you can see it properly. This is another landscape one, the inside of the little mouse's house. I think mum's preparing dinner there while the two little mice help. This is one that I've started, as you can see, and I've been using my Prismacolor pencils. Again, just an absolute dream to use pencils in these books, but markers work just as well. And I love the little vintage stamps with all the little animals and flowers on them, teapots and cute little, um, little emblems and things like that. So absolutely love this page. Again, we've got a landscape one here. So this, this is quite a chaotic scene actually. We've got a mouse up here on the chandelier. We've got a bird holding the front door key. Uh, we've got feathers flying everywhere, piles of books. We've got a sneaky little cat having a wink there. Um, it's just a very uh, busy scene. Here we've got a very finely drawn, very delicate, it almost looks like a wedding portrait type thing, but it does say happy birthday on it. So you could use it as a sort of Easter themed. If you've got anybody that's got a birthday around Easter, you could uh, make like a giant card and cut this out and color it. And that'd look really, really sweet. So here we've got um, mummy and daddy cat and all their little kittens in the basket. We've got a rocking horse. We've got some lovely vintage shabby chic rose wallpaper and it's all very in that shabby chic vein very vintage very um granified if i can say that um but really really sweet so this is an outdoor scene we've got flowers creeping all over the brick walls and coming down as well in a sort of um what's that word with it all the flowers come down and um sort of drape I, I know what I mean, it'll come to me. Um, we've got a wheelbarrow full of flowers, uh, canopy, there you go. Uh, we've got a wheelbarrow full of flowers. We've got some ducks and their little ducklings. Very, very sweet. We're here again with the ducks and the ducklings and we're 
Looks like we're having a little outdoor bath and Mummy Duck is drying off the little baby duck. Here we've got a sweet little pig. It looks like he's uh, wrapped in a bow and sitting in a bunch of teacups and we've got another little sleeping pig down here as well. I have to say that this edition of Colouring Heaven, apart from Jasmine Beckett Griffith's um, edition, this is actually my favourite. I absolutely adore Kanoko's illustrations. You can't not love them. Uh, so here we've got lots of little ducks and rabbits and carrots and all sorts of vegetables and fruits and things. And then here, another spherical framed design of some little mice or hamsters making a cake. Here we've got this king cat or queen cat and lots of crowns for you to colour. Lots of gems as well for you to practise that gemstone colouring as well. Now here we've got what looks like some rabbits um, in the pantry. So getting some ingredients out for dinner. We've got uh, shelves and all different jars of vegetables and things like that as well as these big sort of pears and oranges in the frame all the way around. Now on here we have another little mouse, there's loads of mice, I think that's probably Kanoko's favourite animal, um, and loads of big blooms and flowers for you to colour. Here we've got a few little garden shelves again with a ladder, a watering can, a milk urn and a lovely wooden wheel. So this is a rabbit uh, with the duck and a little duckling. Again, we've got that key in the frame. Uh, we've also got some suitcases and some sunflowers. This is a beautiful illustration of a giant, or maybe even properly sized, um, dessert bowl full of ice cream and jelly and desserts and lollies and fruit and biscuits and all that good stuff. Now here we've got a rabbit or a hare uh, in her artist studio, so doing a bit of painting there. Got a cup of tea, lots of fruit again, and a beautifully patterned window in the background, so some stained glass colouring would look brilliant there. So this is very vintage and very sort of 1920s maybe, maybe earlier than that. Um, so we've got all of these beautifully ornate mirrors and brushes and perfume bottles and lipsticks and some curtain swashes at the top there. Very, very oldie worldy looking. Here we've got the rabbit's wedding day. So this is beautiful. We've got a gorgeous wedding dress covered in lots of floral patterns. We've got the wedding shoes with the bows on the back. We have a beautiful window. I'm sure that's got a name as well, that style of window. We have this mirror surrounded by ornate flowers and fleur-de-lis type uh, illustration. We've got some roses and some birds flying in and a little afternoon tea table there as well. Here we've got uh, what, it's about shoes really, but this could be the shoe fitting for the wedding and lots of different patterns on these shoes. So I guess Miss Rabbit is choosing which pair of shoes she wants for her wedding. Now we have another rabbit who is choosing their dress. Maybe they're a guest for the wedding. And um, we have a wardrobe with lots of different clothing items inside. This one is a couple of squirrels and there's lots of acorns and um, that sort of foliage on this page. We've got a ball of wool and I think that this is attached to Mr. Squirrel's uh, jumper. So that's obviously gonna unravel. This one here has all sorts of animals on it. We've got a frog, uh, we've got a deer, we've got the cat, we've got the birds, uh, the duck, uh, what else? That might be it, I think. Lots of oriental types of fans and this uh, oriental lady with a huge umbrella sat on this boat in the center. This one here is, I think, I think mice again and we're up on a little tiny door that's in embedded into a tree trunk and we have a beautiful path laid out with all these flowers to the side as well so this one again the line thickness varies throughout the book as you can see that some of those lines are quite heavy whereas these are very spindly and delicate 
so it does vary. We've got a peacock, we've got, I'm not quite sure what this animal is, it sort of looks like a squirrel but there's lines down the back and I, do, I have seen that animal before but I can't remember what it's called. We have the stag, we have a pig, we have a mouse, we've got a parrot here as well and all of this sort of water with a rainbow, it's very very whimsical this one, um, probably could do the water pink and green if you wanted to. Here we've got a page that's very heavy on pattern, it looks almost like Turkish floor tiles and again a little squirrel scene in the centre. Here's a very simple birdcage centred on the page, so there's nothing around it, it's not too busy, probably be a good one to start on if you're a bit daunted by the busier pages. Now this one, I think I recognise this or something similar from one of um, Kanoko's books, probably Rhapsody in the Forest, and this has sort of a grayscale background on it, but you could colour over that if you wanted to. And it has a very opulent set of buildings here, like a palace, and we have the Pegasus, we have a raccoon, and lots of water lilies at the bottom. Here we've got a couple of rabbits again inside this beautiful picture frame and some branches around it with bows on. This one looks like a, a garden party, so we have the cat, we have a bear, another cat, a rabbit, uh, the squirrels, the mice, I think that might be a fox, we've got a heron, um, and that might be a skunk actually with the stripes off, I'm not sure. We've got some cute little puppies, we've even got a little bee and a ladybird, so lots of, uh, lots of lovely animals eating outside. Another outdoor scene, we have the tree, we have the sunflowers, we have the beach ball and the kids are playing and there's the mum stood at the door watching them and it's a really sweet scene. This one is sort of uh, inside maybe a bandstand or pagoda that's outdoors. Uh, we've got this really sweet um, dog sat on the swing, we've got a lemur, we've got penguins, there really is a plethora, there's a goat, there really is a plethora of different animals in this book. Here we've got some chicks, so again this would be another great Easter illustration for making cards or uh, just making a frameable piece of art. We've got these chicks here and lots of flowers. Here we've got a couple of mice inside their lovely cosy house with really busy wallpaper and lots of trinkets and jewellery boxes and perfume bottles and things. This is another sort of oval uh, frame made out of flowers and ribbons. We have a hedgehog and a parrot on there as well. Here we have a beautiful scene of two little mice looking out uh, on the landscape around their house. So we've got some buildings here, we've got lots of trees, lots of depth in this photo with the mountains in the background. Here we've got some birds sat on the edge of the bird bath or the bird feeder. Uh, we've got the duck, uh, we've got a mangle and a big wash tub. So it is very much sort of set in olden times. You've got a lot of items that you probably recognise from a long, long time ago. And that is the end of the book. So that is all 40 drawings. And as you can see, or well, in my opinion anyway, it's so, so worth 4 99 And I think that specifically for this edition, everyone else is thinking the same because it has actually sold out on the very day that it was released. So it's been very, very well received and very sought after as well. Now, as we speak, this could change, but as we speak, there are two of these available on the newsstand website. All the links are gonna be in the description, but the publisher, Anthem, don't have any left and they've been scrambling around the office because the people there did have just had no clue how this was going to fly out because usually they've got the sort of the same amount of stock um, and this just flew so they've been scrambling around the office all day uh, taking apart the package that they put together of this book with a set of faber castell pencils they've been taking those packages apart and using uh the the books on their own to send out to people just because there's been just amazing amazing response to this edition so if you are looking to get your copy check newsstand first they've got two left as of right now so they're going to be out of stock very very soon also keep checking the anthem publishing link that i'll be putting in the description as well because they're hopefully going to be getting more stock so do keep checking now if you are in the uk you can find this book in all of your local supermarkets, mainly Morrison's. I'm hearing a lot of people say that Morrison's seem to always have a copy of this. 
It's also available in local newsagents, but I will be leaving a link in the description where you can check uh, the store locator of where you can find this book. So overall for $4.99, great quality paper, all one-sided, it can all be coloured from front to back, uh, brilliantly talented Kanoko Agusa illustrations, you know, just absolutely fantastic. I can't say enough about this book, as you can tell. Um, and the next edition, we're going to be having a collection coming out of cats, so if you're into cat colouring, you're going to love that. That's going to be on sale on the 7th of March. And as always, I'll keep you updated with the new editions that are released. So if you do like this, let me know in the comments and let me know if you managed to grab yourself a copy as well. So thank you so much for watching the review and I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.